Now, with a cam the new camera gimbal for the uh, Iconic X, I did take off the front plate for the GoPro, and uh, the gimbal came in today that I'm going to use on the Iconic X. So let me pull it out of the box. It came all, all together. That was kind of unique. And that's pretty much what it looks like. Got the GoPro on it right now. I'm going to just um, hook it up real quick and see if it works. I'm going to plug the battery in on the Iconic X and we'll try it right now and see how it works right out of the box. Okay, I plugged in. We'll give it a minute, see what happens. Okay, it's waking up. Okay, now it's on. Now I don't have the tilt and anything hooked up for it right now, but I just want to see if it worked out of the box. Now I'm going to remove this upper bracket, this carbon fiber upper bracket here, and then pull the, the circuit board out that runs the gimbal. And the little brace on the back on this big motor, I'm going to use that in junction with uh, making a little bracket here out of aluminum. I'm going to drill it and just cut a little tiny piece about inch and a half, two inches long, and it's going to mount up on top of the upper part, the upper plate of the Iconic X. And the circuit board that's down inside here, I'm going to mount that um, right in here. Now this is the way my camera gimbal system came out for my GoPro 3 um, gimbling system. It's been converted now to a straight front mount gimbling system for the the GoPro 3 and um, a lot of guys are, are getting away from the ones that are hanging down underneath the craft because you got real big heavy long landing gear to where that thing fits up underneath there and it does basically the same job where it just comes straight out the front of the craft and uh, it's you're subtracting a lot of weight when you do this you're getting a better picture this way because the propellers are are not in the picture anywhere the way that this one is mounted up on the iconic x no matter where i tilt this thing the pr propellers just don't show up anywhere so it's really nice uh, that it's like that the only drawback you have to do is now i had to move my battery as you can see on the bottom I did have it on top in the first flight and I always like to put my batteries on top just for maintenance to pop them on and off easy but I didn't have enough room on the top plate for the Iconic X to absorb the extra weight hanging out the front end from the camber or the, the gimbling system so I did have to use the rest of the frame on the lower part and mount my battery further back because this is my CG point that's right here so you guys can see it's nice and balanced and you can see where the batteries push far back right there and I have it strapped on now I did have to put in a spacer because I have 500 um, Elyne landing gear for a RC helicopter on the bottom that's what I use and the spacers push the battery away from this now this is the little bracket I've made to hold on the gimbal system and it's just a, a piece of one inch by one inch angle aluminum got it from the hardware store um, I, I bought a long piece and I had to cut this I trimmed off a little bit off the top with my table saw and it's got I drilled out using the travel ways on the uh, bracket for the the uh, GoPro 3 gimbal system to drill my holes to mark uh, make my marks and, and strike those in and drill it and that's I used um, two three millimeter screws and on the back side I have lock nuts on the end of them. Now looking down on the top I had to spread out the, where they're mounted right here I had to open this up because the motor has to go in to in between the frame on the Iconic X it just slides in there nicely it's kind of tight though I had to drill a little hole where wires come out of the top of this motor casement right here to take off some of the pressure on the bend where they come out and go into the circuit board. Another part of the conversion is I had to take off the um, control board for the gimbal system and mount it into the frame on the Iconic X and that's where it's at right there. I just took a couple pieces of carbon, sliced them the, the width of the control board and then I glued them on with a um, the um, 3M windshield glue where 
it dries really um, hard, but it's rubbery at the same time. It can handle flexing. Now on the circuit board for the gimbal, you have one wire that comes out with a, a plug on it. It's a servo wire. And um, the receptacle on the end, what this does is you can connect it up into your, your DJI NASA and use the gimbling system on your NASA. But I chose not to use that. It has um, the three wires here. The, the white wire here is for uh, a signal wire that goes into the board that controls the roll on your gimbal that makes it go side to side. That's what the white wire does. Now the red wire is also a signal even though it's red going down into the board and that controls your tilt where it, it tilts up and down. Now I have one open ser servo on my AR8000 and that is auxiliary 3 which is right here and you can see I've got a, a servo extension wire that, that connects right here in, in uh, auxiliary 3 it comes out and goes to the front and then it's, it's converted to a single wire that I have connected on the white wire to control signal and that goes into I'm only using the tilt on here so that one single connector here for I have it converted it is really a white wire but the converter wire is yellow and that goes into the center and feeds this red wire and this allows the unit to tilt now you don't have to have power running from your your AR8000 you don't need any of the other wires because this um, control board already is connected to the main system right here which is 3S on, in this case on this um, Iconic X and this powers up the board so the only thing that the the board needs is the signal so that's why when you look at this little connection here there is only um, let me find it there's the only the one wire that makes it work now I'm gonna fire up my um, DX8 and then uh, so you guys can see how this thing works and I'll put some power onto the uh, Iconic X. Now I have the um, the gimbal assigned to my control knob inside my DX8 and I'll set it down here so you guys can see it move. Now I'm gonna use the controller so you can see it. You can adjust the limits inside your your um, DX8 by just going into I have this one set up on the um, the auxiliary 3 um, servo so I have to just go um, into servo setup and then I click throttle go to auxiliary 3 and I click on that once I get um, the DX8 to the um, your my travel, which um, for auxiliary three, I can take the control knob and move it in in uh, up and down the scale, and you can see that the little box around it allows me to set my limits at the at the high or the low end of the tilt. Now I'll move the uh, control knob to the other direction. And same thing over on this side. I can I can control the limits of where I want the tilt to wind up. Now my Iconic X consists of um, on the frame for this flight. It's got the NASA um, V2. And it's the orange version. Um, it's got 30 amp ESCs. They're hobby wing. And you can see them up inside the frame, they're the yellow ones. And um, it's got, now the motors are 650 kV and they are 42 by 15 millimeter. Uh, these are the pancake type or style. Um, they work really nice because they don't spin as fast and the craft does not have as much power as it does with the 28 series of motor. But these are this acts like a big flywheel and it's a little bit more forgiving if your propellers are out of balance and the other thing it does is when you're descending or taking off it helps keep hold the craft evenly um, especially on the descend 
because we all know on some of my first videos with my 450 it was constantly going like this if I come down now this one here descends really nice and smooth and uh, I'm gonna try and get that caught in the video if I can when I take this thing out for a test now, as far as my battery goes I'm just using the uh, a 3s battery and this is the uh, the Winmax Platinum Series, it's the 40 um, C discharge at low and high, it's 80 amp uh, discharge. So that's the battery I use. It's uh, normally, it's like a, a 5200 milliamp battery. It works out pretty good with a little bit heavier copters like how this one here is. Now as far as me running this thing with the FPV on today, I'm not going to make it because I just finally got the connector here for the... Um, the GoPro 3. I don't want to hook an independent camera up on here. On this one copter, I'm only going to run it through the um, uh, the, the camera on the GoPro right through the FPV system. So um, the first wire I bought came out of the side of the GoPro and bumped right into the side of the um, gimbal. So it didn't make it. Now this one here has like a right angle plug. So when I plug it into the GoPro 3, It'll cl just clear um, in between the two so I can run my wire straight back and feed the system for um, for my FPV hookup. Now this is my uh, FPV that I'm running and it's the 32 channel. Um, the 500, uh, It's a, actually a 600 milliwatt and I got this from Foxtech. So just showing you guys that. That's my Foxtech goggles as you can see them. Uh, they're the AIO. So, anyway, I'm just about ready for uh, to take this thing out and give it a quick test flight. The only drawback is the temperature is 10 degrees outside. It's, we're having record-breaking co cold temperatures here in Michigan, so it's going to be a very short flight. And the only other thing I'm concerned with is the on the gimbal when I tilt. As you can see, these wires right here. In extreme cold temperatures, the plastic insulation on the wire becomes stiff and it kind of binds it up. So I might get a couple glitches in the, the video, but not really sure. It works fine without in the, the regular temperatures. If it's above 30, I don't have a problem. But this is going to be the coldest day on record I've ever flown outside with a multi-rotor for sure. So I'm going to take it out, set the cameras up, and we'll see how it goes. Flashes mixed in. 